U.S. Secretary of State Hillary Clinton says an argument could be made that Syrian leader Bashar al-Assad is a war criminal, but Clinton did not say that such charges should be made by the international community. U.S. Secretary of State Hillary Clinton told a congressional panel Tuesday that an argument could be made that Syrian leader Bashar al-Assad is a war criminal. Based on uh, definitions of war criminal and uh, crimes against humanity, there would be an argument to be made that uh, he would fit into that category. Hello, everyone. Welcome to Global Government News. Today is Wednesday, February 29th, 2012, and I'm Darko. It's the last last day of the month then we move on to march be interested to see what happens this month but either way my website is ggnonline.com that's ggnonline.com there's a poll up here uh, you can check it out when do you think or feel the crap will hit the fan majority of people are saying within the next 12 months i.e a year followed by next three months so please go in there there's seven days left to vote you can put in your email address get updates there um also, um, DDarko2012 is my YouTube channel, and my backup channel is DDarko2013. So if you can subscribe to the newer one, that would be probably better, because um, eventually I'm going to stop posting to the DDarko2012 when it gets shut down. If it doesn't, maybe I'll just keep posting them, but either way. Okay, so um, there you go. You just saw Hillary Clinton implying that Sirius Assad is a war criminal, right? So she said there's an argument that could be made without actually saying that he was a war criminal. Why? Because, well, there could be an argument there there could be an argument that could be made that she is a war criminal. So and she understands that, but that's why she can't actually say that he's a war criminal. She just has to say there's an argument for it. Uh because you could the good argument would be what? Was that she you know, her along with other people uh, we're spearheading the invasion of Libya, and look what happened to it now, you know, um, just like Iraq and that. So, I mean, if anything, those are war crimes to go in there and do what they've been doing. And the fact that they keep rolling forward, right, like the dominoes, try to push, once again, uh, rid of Syria, which is inevitable here in the next few months or whatever, it's going to happen. Then comes Iran, and, you know, like I said before, they're not gonna they're not gonna put up that much of a resistance. So, I mean, they can only do so much when they're fighting the entire world army. Um, you know, so they're gonna go down too. So, I mean, there's a case to be made that they're just moving forward and all in the name of humanitarianism. And then, and then you look at all the dead civilians that have been left behind. Those in Iraq with that uh, birth birth defects and uh, you know depleted uranium tip bombs and stuff like that. Uh, in Libya as well, and they just go on and they create this destruction, and then they just leave them after they get their regime changed. So it really goes to show you uh, what these technocrats' priorities really are. So thank you for joining me. If you are a new listener, uh, so this first article I have up here, of course, is a propaganda piece. You could tell by the title. Pray for us, says Syrian rebel terrorists as the army closes in. So um, just like in Libya, when they had actually terrorists from. Uh, different parts of Libya, a lot of them are actually outside, where Al-Qaeda, uh, that are now uh, actually calling on a Syria, the world to call and help Syria right now, that's Al-Qaeda calling for that. Uh, you have Al-Qaeda now all around now in Syria as well, helping uh, Syrian uh, rebels take down the regime. But while the Libyan, quote, rebel terrorists, uh, end quote, were in Libya, uh, basically, uh, targeting black Libyans and, and, and creating mass graves and stuff like that uh, and trying to impose Sharia law, what was happening? They were saying, God is good, God is great, so pray for us, pray for them, pray for the terrorists, guys. And be careful, because you might be a terrorist too yourself if you start talking about freedom in your own country. So so if you don't actually agree with what your country, like it's actually yours, so let's just hypothetically say it's yours, your country goes and attacks sovereign nations, right? The one, whatever few are left out there because you've been conquered yourself and you don't like that, well, then you could be a terrorist. <laughs> and you can be guaranteed that if, let's say, there was a movement going on, just called the Restore America movement. It wasn't left. It wasn't right. It was just, we're going to have one party and it's going to be based off one essential thing, and that's the Constitution. Uh, you know, there is an actual constitutional party, but it, it doesn't really matter because that Constitution doesn't really matter anymore. So, they could just call it the, the, the Freedom Party, the Constitution Party, and people actually start, like militias, start taking up arms and starting to get their fucking government back. You'll be rest assured that you'll have 
uh, a Syrian style quote crackdown uh, happening here in the United States within uh, days and they've already had they already have it set up so the government is already prepared for all this the only people that don't know are the stupid Americans right they're the only ones that haven't got the memo yet that they are the terrorists if they decide to actually try to take their country back. I'm sorry for that whole intro there, but let's move on here. France, U.S. arming Syrian rebels with anti-aircraft missiles, says report. A general, general in the opposition militia known as the Free Syrian Army has told journalists that the rebels have received French and American military assistance amid reports of worsening violence as a stricken nation. So, yeah, that's right. They're already armed there. U.S. drawing up new U.N. resolution on Syria. So the United States is drawing up a new draft. The U.N. Security Council resolution on Syria demanding humanitarian access to protest cities um, where thousands have been killed. So... What they're going to do is they're going to create a humanitarian corridor, uh, like I reported on on Monday, uh, uh, an aerial blockade, whatever. They always have different names, a no-fly zone. See, they just change up the names. But either way, it's going to be uh, it's going to uh, create the ability for drones and different types of aircraft, maybe France, whatever, uh, to come in there and start dropping uh, uh, bombs, possibly uh, these cluster-type bombs, like they were in Libya. In these cities where thousands have been killed, they're actually going to kill more. In the name of humanitarianism. So, Israel orchestrates plot to penetrate Syrian territories. Israel is reportedly preparing the grounds for military meddling in Syria by creating chaos in the southwestern Syrian province, uh, bordering the occupied ter territories. And informed sources say Tel Aviv is making efforts to create an insecure and tense atmosphere in the Syrian border province of uh, Kunet. Conitra, sorry, in order to pave the way for presence of UN observers there, which will then be followed by Israeli forces. Next up, Natiyanu will ask Obama to threaten Iran's strike. Intensive preps, uh, preparations underway to ensure a successful meeting between the two leaders next week in Washington, despite lack of trust between the two sides. I, I, I doubt that very much. Uh, again, like the American people are just being left out in the dark here. Uh, U.S. is totally on board with the Israeli um, plans and that, so... I mean, when you say the U.S., I don't mean the American people, maybe not even a decent amount in Congress, but most of them in Congress are sold out. Um, that's why we're in the predicament that we're in. So they'll w they will be on board, all those involved with the Trilateral Commission, the Bilderberg Group, and Council on Foreign Relations, and all these little cozy closed-door private meeting uh, 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 councils and groups, right, that are uh, deciding your fate, going to bring you into war says here, Israeli Air Force getting ready to strike Iran from 223. Uh, Haretz and AP, Israeli Air Force commander, uh, says on Monday that Israel must be prepared for an airstrike on Iran in light of its nuclear activity, but in a meeting with reporters, he wouldn't say whether he thought Israel was capable of carrying out such a mission alone as it did when it bombed an unfinished Iraqi nuclear reactor near Baghdad in 1981. AP sources, Israel wouldn't warn U.S. on a strike. So again, I keep covering this because this is just the propaganda that's conditioning uh, the Americans for this, to, you know, to let them know this is coming, whether you like it or not, right? It's it's kind of like fiction, right? It's on the Internet, it's on TV, it's not real. And it's just kind of um, uh, predictive programming. That's what they're doing. They're stealing and, and people uh, downloading or uploading them. And so when it happens, they're going to be, oh, okay, this is reality now. <laughs> Snap out of it, right? Israeli officials say they won't warn the U.S. if they decide to launch a preemptive strike against Iranian nuclear facilities. Delivered in a series of private top-level conversations, see, private top-level conversations with U.S. officials, right? Said a tense tone ahead of the meetings in the coming days at the White House and on Capitol Hill. Says here, U.S. Air Force, and just remember, D.C. isn't actually America, so, you know, that's the least American part of the United States is D.C., is Washington. So uh, U.S. Air Force prepared if diplomacy with Iran fails. So the U.S. Air Force is prepared. I think the U.S. Air Force is actually the elite's own private army. Like I was saying, Israel is a Rothschild's own private country. I think the Air Force is actually their own private Air Force. The United States has a powerful bombs at the ready <laughs> while your tax dollars in the military-industrial complex in case of a possible... Uh, military action against Iran, i.e. a preemptive strike against a sovereign nation, and work is underway to bolster their firepower of the Air Force like it needs any more. <laughs> 4.5 Richter quake jolts Gorgon suburbs in Iran, so a quake a magnitude of 4.5 shook the suburbs, and this is, of course, in Iran. So this is probably, they're probably getting buzzed by uh, weather weapons and harp-type weapons, earthquakes and stuff like that. That's, that's, real, that's a real key thing to do to create instability in a country before you invade them 
or occupy them or get whatever you want. Iran moves further to end the petrodollar, announces we'll accept payment in gold instead of dollars. Of course, the only problem is, is what? Is that uh, the sanctions, part of the sanctions is on their central bank and <laughs> actually using uh, and transferring gold. So uh, I don't know how they're going to work that. But IAEA, and of course that was done specifically. So when they dumped, you know, did the whole dollar thing except gold, they <laughs> would have that problem too. Kind of like Gaddafi with the diner or diner. It says IAEA works with spies but checks data independently. Former chief said, former IAEA chief said that the watchdog should trust countries it sends its inspectors to and should not be considered the CIA's prolonged arm. That was a quote. For that matter, the agency carefully checks and all spy data receives. Half of the information may be true. Half of it may be disinformation. Therefore, they have to examine it critically. So Speaking of misinformation and disinfo, NGO Monitor denies truth for Israel. says the NGO Monitor was founded to promote accountability, advance vigorous discussion on the reports and activities of NGOs claiming to promote moral agendas such as humanitarian aid and human, human rights. Sorry, In fact, it's a Jerusalem-based pro-Israeli front group disseminates propaganda and other misinformation and hate, debases legitimate human rights organizations, independent journalism, and other truth, equity, justice, Advocates, so you can go in there and check that out. Links will be posted in YouTube's video description. Uh, more on uh, the media and I guess disinformation, but either way, Israeli troops raid two private Palestinian TV stations in West Bank, confiscate equipment. So nice censorship, right? And we have uh, Russia's Central Asian bases face problems. And that's, uh, I only include this because of what? Because of World War III, right? So U.S. forces are vacating the Manas Air Base, and that's made news. But also, uh, Kyrgyzstan's president brought the subject of Russia's unpaid rent for the use of a base in his country during a February 23rd, 25th visit to Moscow. Kyrgyzstan also fears Iranian attack over U.S. facilities. The Kyrgyz president said Tehran could deliver a missile strike at American facilities in Kyrgyzstan. However, he went on to say that the U.S. airbase in his country cannot be used against Iran. He stressed that the U.S. base at the airport cannot go beyond the mandate, which allows for support to an operation only if it is carried out in Afghanistan. Finishing up, several events such as shooting of local civilians and rumors of fuel dumping have led to strained relations with some of the local populations in Kyrgyzstan. NATO wants Azerbaijan, I think that's how you pronounce it, as wedge between Russia and Iran. So it says here, the high-ranking NATO delegation will visit the country in order to begin negotiations on granting the country an individual partnership action plan. Analysis believe that NATO will be welcoming of their country as it could help further separate, uh, separate Tehran and Moscow, could secure an otherwise risky country like Azerbaijan, and it may provide access to Azir's energy resources. A Russian expert says Azerbaijan's territory may be used for striking Iran, so Kyrgyzstan and uh, Azerbaijan. Iran warns Azerbaijan over Iz Israeli arms by report. Remember this. The country's ambassador to Iran was called in and received a warning that Israel must not be permitted to use the country's uh, to stage terrorist attacks against Iran. Finishing up here, scores killed in U.S. drone attack in Somalia. So we haven't heard of the drone attacks lately. U.S. assassination drones killed scores of people in an attack in the outskirts of Mogadishu, probably flying out of Ethiopia. India plans war games near the Pakistani border. Bin Laden death cover up continues. Compound demolished. That's right. So he's dumped that C, right? He was probably already dead. And then when I saw this in the thing, oh, they're tearing it down. Why are they tearing it down? Because they're destroying evidence. Remember that video that I, I, I reported on? Where the actual local residents saying that he didn't even live there. Just rats covering their tracks. AP study U.S. drones kill far fewer civilians than widely believed in Pakistan, so they're not killing as many. That must be better, right? It must be good. Brought to you by, oh, a rare on the ground investigation by the Rothschilds personal uh, newspaper propaganda machine the AP gonna move fast here so stick with me Afghanistan opium production set to rise 61% remember that article I covered but look at this UN agency warns opium production in Asia set to rise so maybe we should bring Marines there too to guard the field so even though in secret deal ISI that's Pakistan's intelligence allows US drone war to resume more people in different more countries selling their own people out it says here, U.S. drone war reaches the Philippines. This is on the terrorist or terrorism-linked rebel group, uh, Abu Saif. That's who the police is blaming, but the interpretation has been contested. The belief is the country's security forces exploit the Abu Saif for their own purpose, and in this case, to boost military ties with the U.S. in a wider bid to counterbalance China and at the expense of their national sovereignty. August 2011, China seeks to legalize disappearances. New Chinese law legalizes disappearance. A starving North Korea agrees to uh, buckle down to nuclear moratorium so they get U.S. food. 
With billions in annual American aid to Egypt at risk, Egypt lifts travel ban on American democracy workers. Thank you.